Let's go! LSU just picked up a nice commitment in the class of 2024 from Deshaun McBride. Comment down below if you believe this is LSU's best defensive pickup so far for the class of 2024. And there is something very interesting that has happened to quite a few players in this current crop. I'll get to that at the end of this video because I do think schools are starting to pick up on a few things when it comes to defensive players. And not only the schools, but the recruiting services. But first, I want to talk about Deshaun McBride. Once again, I always cheer for any LSU player that gets offered and actually decides to play for the absolute coolest freaking university on the planet. And that's exactly what's happening here. And I know a lot of you are big recruit Louisiana people, and this is a Louisiana prospect. So once again, Deshaun McBride is a true safety in every sense of the word. He is a very natural free safety, not a box kind of player. And what I think happens with some recruits is because of their size, they get labeled as a safety, but on their high school footage, you see them exclusively playing in the box and I've seen that um, a few times with some LSU commits and just commitments in general this young man is a safe so look you see some things that I saw last year on Colin Jackson's tape making some plays on special teams that's obviously going to add the value of any recruit if you show the ability on special teams. And there is a very interesting stat about McBride that really stands out to me. Nine, yes, nine interceptions last year in high school. That is an absurd amount considering you play only, what, 12 to 15 games a year, just depending how far you go in the playoffs. So, the bottom line is Deshaun McBride has really good ball skills, and it shows uh, just throughout. And once again, it's not just intercepting the football. It's right on cue right there, getting your shoulder on the football, stripping the football, getting the ball on the ground. And that, to me, looks to be his absolute best trait. Now, one thing you don't see is a lot of explosive plays in the backfield, but that is what you don't want to see if you're recruiting him to be a safety, right? A lot of his tape is him playing off the football, as in at least 7 to 10 yards off. And look at what LSU did a lot last year. They did play a lot of quarters coverage where your safeties were deeper from the line of scrimmage. So once again, I like this fit for LSU. I like his overall game. I think he is a very good player prospect. And it is very important to keep in mind that LSU is kind of sort of young at the safety position where they have Colin Jackson coming in. I think Colin's going to be a really good SEC stud. Jay, uh, Toviano's in this mix as well, along with uh, some other young corners and or DBs, Jeremiah Hughes, Ashton Stamps in this last crop. So we'll see. And then, of course, the transfer portal is always there. You always should factor in LSU every year, bringing in transfer portals for the next cycle. So uh, you saw it this past year with Zy Alexander, Denver Harris, um, and of course the other corners, Deuce Chestnut and J.K. Johnson. So there is a lot of really solid prospects ahead of him. But look, LSU is super inexperienced at the safety position this year, and it seems as if every year um, there is some depth concerns at the LSU secondary. So if you could step in right away and be a big-time contributor, you could play as a true freshman at this position. So just looking at him, I, I think he's a pretty solid player. I really do. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what he is going to bring to LSU. Now, what's very interesting about LSU football, well, let's be honest. The future of this game will continue to be passing the football, right? But something else that will continue to happen is this play in particular, okay? This is where LSU was absolutely dismantled by the Georgia Bulldogs last year, which was the screen game. And I want to see how you react when offensive linemen are breathing down your neck. How do you react when you have these big bodies coming at you? And I want you to see this play, all right? 
the screen to the right, this is St. Thomas More, so Jack Besh, Walker Howard's high school. They run a very uh, creative schemes. Look at all the defensive players fooled by this screen over there. Look at all these defensive linemen over here. So it is one versus three, and I need you to make the tackle to prevent this touchdown, okay? So he shakes off this block and then squeezes through this other block and makes that tackle. I know it's not spectacular. I know it's not a pick six. It's not any of those kinds of things. But, you know, teams are starting to get really good at getting heavy bodies down the field, right? Uh, you, you see the linemen get down the field, especially in some of these RPO screen games. So you love to see it, and then you also see that pick six ability. So the more I watch him, the more I start to believe this guy is going to be a very solid player at LSU with some good special teams ability. And you see him downhill making another play on a screen. So let's actually talk about the class of 2024 as a whole. So I'm going to share with you a few different details about the history of recruiting data and what it actually tells me uh, when it comes to defensive players in particular. But I first want to tell you about our friends at Underdog Fantasy. Don't forget, sign up today. Get your best ball drafts going. Promo code Carter is a very good way to help support your boy. They got some really cool NBA things that they're doing right now as well. Check it out, Underdog Fantasy. And you can also support getting yourself some PHL merch. Also join our PHL Patreon. All of those details are down below. Now we get to the very juicy portion of this video, which is how does all of this fit for the class of 2024? Okay, so the first thing is things are going pretty well when it comes to LSU's recruiting in 2024. Um, you know, you always start with the state of Louisiana, and right now the state of Louisiana has not one, but two players located in the top 100, and I like to extend it to the top 125. Um, my guy, J. Bud Davis, does some really good research on this. Yes, it is true that LSU has done a really good job at producing three- and four-star level players, but the truth is the elite four-star players are often the ones that move the needle nationally on a whole. So, you know, you do look at those two top 100 guys that LSU are going to be after in the future. Trey Des Green is one of them, a tight end prospect, and then the other is Dominic McKinley, by far the fastest riser, not only in 247, but on three recruiting as well. We'll see how LSU's pursuit of both of those young men actually go. But as of right now, this is looking like a very good crop of Louisiana talent. Manny Singleton out of, uh, I say Manny Singleton, Tylen Singleton out of Manny um, is a very talented prospect, a, a very interesting fact about him. Kim Mulkey actually helped uh, with, with this recruitment uh, last weekend at LSU. So obviously things are going in the right direction for him. And obviously for a player like him, it is interesting because Maine and Louisiana had Tackett Curtis and LSU was never truly in it for his services. So once again, I'm a big North Louisiana supporter. Um, so yes, shout out everybody, card shows, you guys know what we do in Bozier pretty often. So, you know, I do like that LSU is in good position to get him. I do like Singleton quite a bit. But there's something that is very interesting with him and quite a few players that LSU has committed right now and why this McBride commitment is very important. So I want to go back to a player who a lot of you are probably familiar with. His name is Michael Doherty, okay? He was a guy that left LSU um, before he even dressed out for spring. And I like to do my own evaluations of a player so the one thing that really stood out to me was that he was labeled as a safety but in high school he exclusively played linebacker he exclusively played in the box so that is a pretty big ask you know to make him turn into a safety when he's never really truly played the position before and there is more recruiting services that have come around on this idea that a lot of people that are labeled as safeties are probably more of a linebacker type. You can see that some of these guys, and you can't really see, but some of these guys were labeled 
originally as safety. So Williams, the highest rated player in this class, was viewed as a safety at one point, but now they are viewed as linebacker. As defensive schemes evolve and overall players at all levels of the defense have gotten lighter, um, if you go look at some older LSU clips, the defensive linemen were thicker, especially that 07 line with Dorsey and Tremaine Edmonds and Tyson Jackson. Now just pretty much every position is just lighter. It's more about speed and the ground you can cover. And I think that's also been affected by the linebacker position. You used to be able to see you know, a bunch of these old school guys with neck rolls, you know, your Al Wilsons uh, at Tennessee, but now you got to be able to cover in space. So why this is important is this kid right here, McBride, is a safety, right? He is not a guy that uh, is, is going to be converted into a linebacker. So that may not seem like a big deal, and yeah, you can always find DBs in the transfer portal, but it's hard to find safeties. This is a position that LSU has whiffed on quite a bit over the past five years, And it's kind of shocking, right, with uh, LSU being DBU. It's a hard position to truly evaluate. And this guy has only safety clips that are out there. So getting someone that you know is going to be a safety and be a part of your class uh, is very critical. Uh, And I think that's why LSU really turned up the heat. So let me know what you guys think uh, down below in today's video. Do you guys think McBride is the best defensive commitment at LSU thus far? I would say no. There's a few guys that I actually like in this crop, and I will reveal who those guys are in our next upcoming live stream. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Once again, there's plenty of different ways you can help support uh, LSU and uh, the, the PHL movement, so make sure you check out those links down below. It is! Power Hour LSU Bam And tonight We are doing Oh we're doing some calzones baby That chicken Florentine Let's go Huh Huh Huh